I think it's time to talk a little bit more about solar. As some of you guys may know who have been following along for a while, I've definitely had my share of issues with solar systems in the past. A bunch of problems with it, went through this whole issue with them. So you guys remember how I attached the solar panel four months ago? Something wrong with the solar panel, which is causing the, the controllers to overheat and then catch on fire. But almost three years of solar experience later, and I, I feel like I've figured this thing out, at least a little bit. I'm certainly no solar expert or electrical engineer or anything like that, but the system that I've been using for the last four months here has been working really well to fit my needs. I do believe that it is one of the best simple solar systems that you can install and we're going to go over that today in this video. I'm in the process of doing like a deep clean on the element right now. I know I mentioned that in the last video. So I was able to take out some of the components of the solar system and put them here. We're going to put them back together in this video and then also I'm going to go through each individual one first and, and talk about how it's worked out for me and why I think it's important and a good part of the system. This is a really simple solar setup guys. It's not meant to be anything too complex or anything like that. The main goal of it is to run my refrigerator 24 seven and then also to be able to charge up all of my electronic devices, which is, which is quite a few. So it definitely does the job, but it's not anything crazy. You know, you're not going to be running like an air conditioner on it or anything like that but for what I need it for on a day-to-day -day life while living on the road it definitely works out well. So the first component of the solar system and arguably the most important is the deep cycle battery. I am using a 100 amp hour AGM sealed deep cycle battery here and that seems to be the magic number for me for like I said before keeping that fridge running and, and doing everything that I need it to do. For a while I did get away with using only a 35 amp hour battery but definitely had some issues with that you know so deep cycle batteries are not really meant to be discharged below 50% for the most part, uh, particularly ones like this one. So they like to be fully charged. And when you're having issues with your solar system constantly, and when I'm using a fridge on a 35 amp hour battery, that definitely hurt the longevity of the battery. It's possible to get away with it with a really small one, but for 160 bucks, this thing has been well worth the cost. It's cheaper than other solutions like lithium or something like that. And as long as you have a, a working solar system, you're gonna be good to go for hopefully a while. One thing to take note of is the weight. This thing is like 70 plus pounds. Uh, so something to think about if you're worried about having too much weight maybe in the back of your camper conversion, but otherwise, I definitely recommend it. Do I look uncomfortably warm right now? I'm like dripping sweat. It is so bad out here. It's so muggy and humid and it's been like this pretty much every day. You know, coming to New England, I thought it was going to be like this wonderful summer. The weather was going to be so comfortable and, and beautiful every day. And it's actually been the complete opposite of that. Our veers, full timers don't come to New England for the summer. It's a trap. Stay west. It's definitely better out there. <laughs> The next component of the system is the charge controller. That is how you distribute power from the solar panel on the roof to the battery so that you don't overcharge the battery, so that you don't have any issues with the battery. It basically is the brains of the system. I use a Renergy Wanderer. It's pretty affordable. I think it's 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon. It's a PWM controller. I know a lot of folks will suggest MPPT because it is more efficient, but the PWM works fine for the small system that I have now. I don't have a crazy 400 or 800 watt system. It's just 100 watts on the roof so it works out. Connecting the charge controller to the battery is a pretty simple process. You basically just connect the positive indicator, uh, the terminal on the charge controller to the, to the positive terminal on the battery and then the negative or the negative and, and that's about it. All of the manuals that I have ever read before, any charge controller I've ever owned, have advised me to connect the battery to the charge controller first and then connect the solar panel to the charge controller. So basically don't connect the solar panel to the charge controller without having it connected to the battery first because it causes major problems for the charge controller. In terms of wiring, I use 10 gauge wiring to connect the charge controller to the battery. I've used thinner wiring before in the past. I had a lot of issues with that, uh, including a fire at one point. So definitely would recommend going with a thicker gauge wire, anything that will help distribute that power from the solar panel to the battery through the charge controller. Solar panel, battery, charge controller. Solar panel, battery, charge controller. That's really all you need and some wiring and, and you're good to go. Speaking of the solar panel, I, I figure we should probably talk about that now because it's also a really important part of this system. I'm currently using a 100 watt Renogy rigid 
solar panel. It's a it's a rigid solar. Did I mention that it's rigid? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep mentioning that because I've used bendable flexible panels in the past and I have had a lot of problems with them. This is my first rigid panel and I will never go back to anything other than a rigid panel at least until the technology gets a lot better. I don't, I don't know how long that's gonna take, but the flexible panels definitely had problems. You know, I would have issues with them being you know efficiency wise and just kind of falling apart over time, not really putting out the same amount of power that they used to. Part of it was my fault. I had them partially shaded. I've had them not secured to the roof rack and they've blown away on the road a couple that's been bad that that's my fault but but they have also not worked as well I've had ones that have just failed on me over time because they're just not as durable this is durable this is efficient this is working out really well and like I said I'm not planning to go back to anything different anytime soon for those of you wondering, the solar panel is secured to the top of the roof with the Honda OEM style roof rack that I have on there. And then I went to Home Depot and bought these like little L-shaped bar things with holes in them and then some nuts and bolts and was able just to kind of rig it up and it's worked out. You know, it's, uh, it's definitely pretty sturdy. A lot of folks will suggest concern about that little gap in between the top of the roof and the bottom of the solar panel there, but I don't really notice any issues on the highway or anything like that. Vibration seems to be kept down and the panel is definitely not going anywhere. Overall, like I said before, this is a pretty simple setup. The final step is to plug in the solar panel. I've already got the negative attached. This is the positive wire from the solar panel. I'm going to plug it into the charge controller and that's going to complete our solar system. And there we go. It is plugged in. You can see the blinking light here on the charge controller that is indicating that solar is now coming in. I'm going to tighten it up and we will be good to go. And then I also have this 12 volt adapter here. It's got three 12 volt outlets on it and four USB ports. And this is really all that I need. I know I've mentioned in previous videos, to this day, I still do not run an inverter. No AC inverter. This is an entirely 12 volt system. I don't really have any appliances or anything like that that I need to run on an inverter. So this works out fine. My fridge, the main purpose of the system, plugs right into one of these outlets and works well. It is a 12 volt fridge. My electric fan here is another thing. It's 12 volts. You see the 12 volt cord there dangling almost smacking me in the face that is also something that i'm able to run right on this and i can charge my cell phone and my camera batteries via the usb ports here and then my laptop i have a special 12 volt adapter for that plugs right into one of these outlets and i also have one of those for my drone you know i could run an inverter i could definitely fit one and just that would be one extra step to the system but i don't really need it This is brutal. Well, the solar system set up. I think that pretty much sums everything up here. There are a couple of things I want to address before ending the video. For one, the cost of the system. This is something that I feel like a lot of people will be curious about. I want to say that the, like I said before, the battery was probably around $150. I think you can get one for around that price to this day. And then the solar panel was also about $150. You can get one for a little bit cheaper, a rigid panel, just from like an off brand, but I decided to go with Renergy. Uh, because I felt more confident with Renergy and I went to their, I made a video about this in the past, I went to like their actual headquarters and returned a panel and they were super helpful so I decided to go with them again but that's what I did with that so that worked to 300 there, the charge controller about 40 or 50 bucks that puts us up to 350 or so and then any wiring to go with it so like the 10 gauge wiring I just bought from Home Depot, the guy just cut off a piece of it for me and I bought that, it was not very much money and then the little adapters like the 12 volt adapters and stuff were also pretty cheap on Amazon. They're there is an article on my website that I did to correspond with this video, so feel free to check that out. There's a link in the description below. There'll be a bunch of links on there to Amazon affiliate links with all of this stuff that I've been talking about in the video, and it'll have a little bit more information about the solar system as well. And one last solar-related thing that I, I tend to get a, a lot of questions about, people are curious how I run the wiring from the solar panel to the inside of the element. I run it through the sunroof. I'm able to close the sunroof without any problems right on top of the wiring. It does not leak. I've never had an issue with it. I've actually had that extension wire that I have in place today for the longest out of all the things involved with this solar system. That is the oldest thing that I have. I've had it since before I even had the element camper that you guys know today. So it's worked out. It's definitely uh, not a problem at all to run it through the sunroof. And I feel like you could also run it through the door as well. If you don't have a sunroof, you can close it into the door. The wire is thick enough. It's a strong enough gauge wire that doesn't really have any issues. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are considering putting together a simple solar system for an RV or a camper conversion or whatever it may be. And be sure to check out that article on my website for more information about the solar system and links to all the products that I'm talking about in this video. I'll talk to you all in the next one.